up guys my name is James Butler and welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to be sharing a little story with you guys no this is not one of my crazy funny hyper stories but I feel like it is an important story to share with you guys I've been wanting to tell you guys my life story for a really long time but it's been like really hard for me to decide how much I want to put on the internet you know what they say once it's out there you can never take it back but I don't think this is something to be ashamed of my life story is what made me the person that I am today so all the events that have gone on in my life are just parts of me and I want to share myself with you guys and not only is it important to create content that will make people laugh and stuff like that like I do but I think it's also I want to also create content that will inspire people because like me like you like everyone everyone has a story and everybody can learn something from everyone else's story whether it's positive things or negative things things to do things to not do so today I'm gonna to be sharing my story with you guys but before I get into my life story I just want to let you guys know that I am not telling this story to make you guys feel bad for me I don't want you guys to feel bad for me if anything I'm telling this story to make other people out there feel like they're not alone and that there's other people going through similar things before I get into my story I want to remind you guys that all my social media links will be in the description box below as always if you're not already a subscriber please hit that subscribe button so you can come along on my journey with me on the internet also give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it and if you know anybody that could be inspired or get anything out of this story make sure you go share it with them and I love you guys so much so let's begin so I'm gonna tell you guys like the bridge short version of my story because if I told you the whole thing we'd be here all day and ain't nobody got time for that because there have been so many things that have gone on in my life I can't really remember a lot of my younger ages like two three four so I'm gonna kind of skip all of that because I don't really remember anything but yeah, whatever. Let's just get into it. So, I was born in a small town, St. Mary's County, Maryland, 1998 on January 30th. My birthday's coming up. Don't forget. I was the fifth child born in my family and then I got a little sister like a year and a half after. So there's six siblings in my house. I'm not going to tell you guys their names just for confidentiality reasons, whatever. So I grew up in Maryland with five siblings. It was great. Um, then we ended up moving to South Carolina, my family and I. I don't really remember or know why we actually moved to South Carolina, but I know we did. Um, and we lived there for a couple of years and then unfortunately my mom and dad's marriage fell apart. So my dad moved back to Maryland and my mom stayed in South Carolina for a little bit before she moved to Boston because I was a daddy's boy at the time and I was like a lot and my mom couldn't handle all of the siblings plus me it was just a lot so I ended up going to live with my dad for a little while and then I moved back with my mom and then I moved back with my dad when I was like seven eight or seven eight ish so now I'm living with my dad it's just him and I but unfortunately he started drinking like a lot he was drinking too much and it became really unsafe and almost like dangerous in a way unfortunately because of this it was like hard for him to get a job so then we had like no money then we became really really homeless and this was going on for like two years and then once my mom in Boston found out what was going on with me and my dad in Maryland that we were homeless and he was drinking a lot my mom flew back from Boston to Maryland to come pick me up I moved in with my mom and I came back to Boston this is like the summer leading into fifth grade now so my mom came and picked me up from Maryland because it just wasn't safe it like wasn't a place for me to be um, so now that we're back in Boston it's me my mom and my two sisters my other siblings are older and they're doing their own thing so it was like 2007 2008 maybe that I came back to Boston with my mom but then my mom became very like stressed out and it was just like this whole big thing and unfortunately the same thing that happened to my dad happened to my mom she began drinking a lot a lot a lot so now this kind of goes into my foster care story the details of the things that went on on the night that I got taken and put into foster care isn't really important so I'm gonna skip over all that stuff all you need to know is that it included my mom getting a little bit too drunk and there was a whole scene the cops came they took us so from the time that I got into foster care in like fifth grade all the way to now I've lived in over probably 12 maybe even 13 different foster homes and towns so obviously this includes a lot of moving and a lot of change and a lot of anxiety and even though it's probably not the best thing in the whole entire world I like to look at it as a positive thing because now I'm like the best person at making friends because I've changed schools and started different schools so many times 
times that like I think I've met every kind of person there is in the whole entire world. So in fifth grade when I got taken and put into foster care, I was separated from my siblings. My um, I didn't see them for months and months and months actually. And at this time, my siblings was pretty much like all I really had. Like I haven't heard from my dad for a really long time. My mom was there, but we weren't able to see her for a really long time. So it was like really challenging and actually statistically showing like more than 80% or I think it's even like 90% of siblings once they get into foster care are immediately separated. So in sixth grade, I was living in a town called Taunton, Massachusetts. And as a way to make friends, I decided to do the music. Musical. I did the musical. I loved it. I forget what it was. Yes, it was gospel. No, what's it called? Godspell. It was Godspell. That's kind of where my whole like dance career began. My friends who were in the musical, their mom after one of the shows came up to me and was like, whoa, do you dance? Like you're super talented. You should definitely get into dance. So I got into dance and it was great. It was fun. I loved it. It was the best thing in the whole entire world. So at this time, I started visiting my mom more. Um, every Tuesday, we got to go see my mom. And then we noticed that she was getting like really skinny and she was ill we didn't really know what was going on but we know she was really sick one day our social worker came up to us and was like hey guys we are having our regular Tuesday visit but this time it's going to have to be in the hospital because unfortunately your mom was has been in the hospital for a month or whatever and so that Tuesday we saw my mom in the hospital and she told us that she had six months to live because she because she was battling cancer. Um, this was obviously really hard for my siblings and I because at this moment, it's like all I had is me, my siblings, and my mom. And so then like to lose my mom was like the scariest thought in the whole entire world. So then we visited my mom about like two more times in the hospital. One day we went to go visit her and we walk upstairs and there's all these people in black in front of her room. And we're like, what the hell is going on? And I was excited because because now I finally knew where her room was because we visited her in her room so many times at the hospital. So I'm like running over to her room and the nurse comes out and she's like, wait, 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 wait. And then she's like, where's your social worker? Um, so when you're in foster care, everyone has a social worker who handles their case or whatever. My social worker's like, what's going on? And she's like, the nurse tells another nurse to go get the family. And so at this moment, I'm looking at my sisters and I'm holding their hand like something is going on, but I'm not quite sure what. And then my sister and my aunt comes out of the room them, and they're bawling their eyes out and then that's when it hit me that my mom passed away um and I remember my aunt and my sister my older sister who's older <laughs> coming out of the room and the first words that my aunt said was she's no longer in pain and it's like as much as you love someone and you want them to be here it's also you don't want them to be in pain being in foster care and moving around and not being able to see my siblings was hard as it is and it was challenging and not knowing where you would be sleeping or not be able to make friends because you're afraid of having to leave them and not knowing when you would be changing schools was hard as it is so then to lose my mom on top of that was even harder and at the time of all this going on I'm currently living in a group home and um, I'm dancing I'm taking dance classes and I had a couple dance shows but my mom was always too ill to come to any of my dance shows so to this day she's never gotten to see me perform and my mom has always told me since I was a little boy that I one day I would be a star and one day I would be an entertainer and make her proud. But now every time I'm on the stage, I act like she's the only one there. So it inspires me to like want to work harder and become a star and become an entertainer because that's what she always called me, like her little star. So um, so yeah, so then my mom passed away and it became really, really hard. Thank God I had dance because if I didn't find the art of dance, I don't know how I would be able to express myself. I was getting bullied at school for being a dancer and getting called faggot and gay and homo and stuff like that too so there was just like so much going on and I would just go dance I would dance off all my angers and frustrations and that's a whole nother story about the power of dance and the power of art and stuff like that but um so then I began moving a few more times so then I was dancing at one studio when she passed away and I changed studios but shortly later I actually found out that one of my dance teachers who did my solo and stuff has always wanted to adopt kids and that I was going to be moving in with her. And some of you guys know who her is because now I live with her and I'm adopted now and I've been here for three years. 
Um, and that's part of the reason why I started YouTube too. There was so much going on and I would turn on my camera and watch Kingsley videos and Trey Melvin videos. It would just put a smile on my face because I went days in and days out with not smiling at all. I would have to mask my pain by going to school and trying to be the class clown and making people laugh. And putting smiles on other people's faces and seeing other people laugh became a sense of comfort for me because I, even though deep down inside I was screaming and crying the thought of me making someone else laugh was the best feeling in the whole entire world and that's why I feel like I do what I do now YouTube because I love love putting a smile on people's faces that's why I want to share this story like I said I don't want you guys to feel bad for me I want you guys to feel inspired like everyone said I wouldn't make it but now look at like some of the things I've gotten to do today and so many of those things are due to you guys and you guys supporting me so I thank you guys so much I don't think I would go back in my life and change one of event or one thing and that's just because if none of those things that have happened to me I don't think I would be this person on the internet that you guys love and it's made me who I am I saw an amazing quote today in one of my classes on the wall and it said everybody has a story so make yours a bestseller I love that because everyone does have a story and it's important to share your story don't be ashamed for so many years I was just ashamed of being a foster kid I was ashamed of being the dancer guy I don't know I don't think you you should be ashamed of your past because it's not where you are, it's where you're going to go. <sighs> yeah, I guess that's my little story. There are so many things I left out and I jumped all around, so if you guys have any questions about my life story, please leave them in the comment box below, and I would love to do a follow-up video like my life story questions and answer. I love you guys so much, and I thank you guys so much for your support because with you guys don't know how much you guys mean to me and how much you guys help me every single day and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up um hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and i'll see you guys in my next video bye